All right, so we're gonna set up a live trap, try to catch ourselves a raccoon so we can do a little bit of a catch and cook. The trick is, is that uh, raccoons aren't in season right now, but we do have a raccoon that was given to me from a, a farmer as a nuisance animal, so we're gonna actually cook that. I wanna show just how easy it is to catch raccoons, so if you're, you know, we always talk about survival situations and catching game and raccoons are probably one of the easiest things to catch, right? Here, yeah, I would say. Yeah, Here and this are. is farmland. We're yeah. in southern Ontario this time, playing around. And uh, so this is typical off-the-shelf live trap um, because they won't let us use um, any other kind of foothold trap or or a body grip trap or anything of that sort. But these are these are legal for removing nuisance wildlife. So all that we're going to do is you're going to use an empty can of uh, salmon. Uh, I have a little bit of salmon left, and it smells pretty strong, right? Yeah. And uh, what have you done? Like you, you did a little trick? Yeah, well the lid had salmon stuck to it also. So I took the lid and I dragged it through the grass to leave a salmon scent trail from the little edge of the water here. There's a little spring fed creek and up to the edge of the trap, just in case something's traveling through the water, the raccoon will smell it or if it crosses the path. Yep. And we've got the chill camera set up over here. So hopefully we catch any of the action. Um, if we do catch something, we're gonna use that as rights to use the raccoon. If we don't catch anything, we're still going to eat the raccoon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if anybody knows anything about raccoons, they're super easy to catch and they're extremely plentiful and they aren't on the most people's menu. I mean, they carry all sorts of really weird things and yeah. parasites and all those things. So they're not exactly very palatable, but we're going to try do our best to try to make it more palatable. We've got a recipe, uh, a Native American recipe I dug up. So we're going to yeah. we're going to try to put something together. They're not mentally pal palatable, but they're they're good eating. Yeah, they're a dark meat, right? And they have to be treated like a dark meat, so they have to be slow cooked. Anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later. So all we're going to do is chuck this into the back. And uh, all it, all that activates it is a, it's a basically a foot pedal at the back. And when the animal steps on it, it closes shut and can't open again. So there we go. Set. I'm going to check this in the morning. And uh, like I say, if we do catch something, we're just going to release it. So there'll be no... Um, no killing this time, but there is going to be a dead animal. All right, so we check tomorrow? Yep. All right. Cool. And uh, we're not going to stress this raccoon out too much. As long as you're not uh, right up in its face, it's not going to bother it. All right, let's get this raccoon on its way. It's not light. One raccoon. All it took was a empty can of salmon. Yep. Yeah. I mean, be pretty easy to do that with a bit of fish remains. Yeah, fish guts or something. Just drag them from the water up to your trap. Throw them in the back. That worked out great. Yeah. And that's just a man man-made live trap. So it keeps your food if you want. If you want to catch an unlimited supply of raccoon, and you needed it, that'd be the way to do it. Yeah, especially in an area where there's lots of nuisance raccoons, like if farmers have them or in vineyards, you could you could be supplying yourself with a lot of raccoons that way, right? Yeah. And keeps your food fresh too. So if, you try, if you're doing this in the summer, you don't have to be too worried about your <coughs> food spoiling. Yeah. Hi YouTube. It's a sad day. Brought my stuffed animal, my childhood stuffed animal. Never gave it a name because it wasn't alive, never was alive. But I think I'll call it Rocket. I think you guys wanted me to call it something last time, so we're gonna call this stuffed animal Rocket. Um, Rocket's gonna join me on this small mini adventure. It's kind of a redo. Uh, the last episode, Raccoon Catch and Cook. Listen, you guys gotta get out more. There's more animals to eat than chicken, beef, chicken, I'm gonna say beef, chicken, cows, and pigs. There's also wild game. Now I'm not gonna crap all over you guys for eating 
you know, you domesticated animals, but I don't think you should crap all over me for eating wild animals. I think it's an ethical way of consuming meat. Um, the vegetarians out there, thank you. You guys did an excellent job. You made respectful comments. And then there was all those other meat eaters out there who eat domesticated animals who think I should just go to the grocery store and get up a penned animal and have somebody else do the dirty work for me. Well, why can't I do the dirty work for my own self and connect with nature in a way that feels natural to me? So anyway, this is my friend Rocket. As I said, he's my childhood stuffed animal. I didn't go out and buy him just for this video. I wouldn't do something silly like that. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how you would process a wild animal just in case you decide maybe one day you wanna go out and consume something other than something that's been handed to you like a domesticated animal. Maybe you are a domesticated animal, think about it. And I'm not gonna get all over you. What I want you to do is open your mind and open your eyes to the world outside of your own experiences. So the last video was age restricted and that means that the wider YouTube audience can't view it anymore. So you can't age restrict a stuffed animal because they're universally accepted by everybody. There's no blood and gore on the inside of these. Just like there's no blood and gore on side, in the inside of a cartoon character. And I'm talking about the Roku, Rocket cartoon character. So anyway, we're going to string this guy up. And I'm going to demonstrate how you would process this animal. If you want to watch the real video where I process a real animal, you're going to have to take off the uh, age restricted bracket. You're going to have to look back into my old videos. I'll put a link down on the bottom. If you can't see that link, it's because you're on age restricted mode and you need to take it off. So this is going to be an advertisement for the real video and a way I hope where we might open eyes of the general public that wild animals are okay to consume because they live a long, sometimes long, sometimes short, natural life, not caged up, not cooped up. So anyway, let's get this animal, animal strung up just like you would string up a domesticated animal when you're ready to butcher it. And, uh, Let's go through how I would process this animal down. I feel absolutely ridiculous doing this on a stuffed animal, but that's what our world's become. All right, now that you've got your animal strung up, you're gonna want a good sharp knife. Now, just keep in mind that Rocket is dead and he's not feeling anything anymore. The rest is all just your psychology working on you. Okay, so in order to properly clean a raccoon, what you're going to want to do is make a T. Your T is going to go like that and then down. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off on the lower legs. You're going to come up to the leg here. That's going to separate. You're going to get your knife in behind and pull through. That'll detach on that side. You'll do the same thing coming across the belly up the leg here. Come pull, separate the skin, get your fingers in behind and pull. Then what you're going to do is you're going to get your knife down here in the belly. These are the soft tissue down in here. You're going to come up the belly, opening it up. And that will expose the visceral organs here. You're going to go around on both sides of there. You're going to separate it from up top with your knife. And then you're going to be able to get your fingers up underneath and be able to separate either the, the tail. You can separate the entire tail or you can make a slit up inside the tail, peel it back and then you're gonna to have to work that tail out. There's a special tool for that, but we won't get into that right now. So once you've got that taken off, you'll be able to pull down the legs on both sides, down to the front. You're gonna reach down in here, grab the esophagus. Now remember, an animal is a tube inside of a tube. So the esophagus is gonna be connected through the stomach, the digestive system, which curls around into the anus. So you're gonna separate that up top, or you should already be. And then you're going to reach up, grab the visceral organs out, and pull them down. So once the organs are all taken out, then you can decide what you're going to keep. I would suggest uh, keeping the liver, the heart. Um, you could potentially keep the kidneys as well. From there on out, you're going to you're going to take the animal down, and you're going to work on the ground. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky to show on a stuffed animal. But what you're going to try to do is you're going to get rid of all the glands. All right, so now you're going to have to use your imagination more than usual because you're going to have to picture this animal has been completely skinned. Okay, so picture the skin off now. You're going to find that there's 
going to be a gland at the back here. So you're going to have to open that up and find the little gland at the back of the leg here. There's going to be another one here in the armpit where the leg bends. So you're going to take that little gland out. It looks like about the size of a bean. And then once you've got the gut cavity open, you're going to be able to reach all the way down to the backbone. Now it's going to be way down deep. Now picture that. So there's going to be six little beans along the backbone here. If you take all that stuff on the inside out, you're going to remove those glands. The next set of glands are located up here on, on the jaw. But if you take, if you're not keeping the skull, you don't have to worry about these. But you're going to remove the tongue. If you remove the tongue, you'll remove most of the glands as is. And then you're just going to want to have a look around uh, to see if you've missed any. There's another one up here. So the front shoulder's quite easy to remove. You're just going to slice down there. That's going to pull away. And then you're going to find a gland in the armpit there. Now the glands, think about the glands of like similar to how humans have glands in their armpits and that makes them body odor. So those glands are going to give an off flavor to your meat. So you want to remove all of them. One there, one there, three along the backbone on the inside of the cavity. One here, one here, and then a bunch along the tongue. Once you've got that, you've got your animal ready for the pot. All right. From here on out, the fictional character Rocket, my childhood stuffed animal, is going to leave the picture. And we're going to join us, me and Jeremy, as we originally filmed the series. So we're going to join up with the real animal. Now this is a real live raccoon, but it will be completely processed and it will look indistinguishable from the meat that you normally consume. Pigs, chicken, and cows. Now. I'm not going to get on you about what you eat, but I hope you won't get on me about what I eat. And I do normally eat domesticated animals because it's simply unfeasible to, to go out and collect a huge variety of wild animals. They're simply not enough for people. But these animals do live, this is a, not a real animal, animals do live a great life right up until they are killed. And they are killed. But a domesticated animal, I would argue, does not live a great life right up until the moment it's killed. In fact, it probably suffers quite a deal. Um, for, for starters, a lot of the chickens are, are penned up real tight in small cages. They're force-fed food. Um, cows are injected with all sorts of hormones so that they grow big and muscular and fatty so that you can consume them at the best potential possible and the highest dollar yield. So they marbleize the meat and they feed it all sorts of um, high carb diet, which cows aren't designed to eat. And a lot of the chickens get so big that they can't walk anymore. Now I know most people don't object to eating fish and eating chickens or eating wild birds like grouse. But for some reason you, get, you object to eating animals that are cute. Now that's probably because we've ascribed a lot of... Um, man-made qualities to animals that are cute and that comes from cartoons and other fictional shows but animals don't have qual human qualities they don't they can't talk they can't walk around and they can't help you in fact a lot of wild animals don't care about you at all and if you ever cornered a wild raccoon it would tear you to shreds because <clears throat> animals are designed to protect themselves and they will at all costs so I'm going to tell you to keep your minds open and maybe experience something other than what you might experience in a sanitized world. The world is a dirty place and while you're not skinning animals, you're hiring somebody else to do it for you. So think about that next time you go to a grocery store and pick up a plucked chicken, uh, a, a cow or a pig. Those all went through the same process that this raccoon went through. So to age restrict that tells me a lot about where we're at right now and, and how we don't know where our food comes from and we don't know the whole process. So guys, get out there and connect with nature, like how it was meant to be. And I can assure you that you're gonna feel a whole lot more connected to your world around you if you do that, rather than simply pick up a slab of meat that you do not respect and sizzle it away on the barbecue. You will have no idea what it's like to kill an animal and take it apart, like I do. Keep an open mind, guys. I'll see you on the other side.
So this recipe uh, calls for about four cups of water, two cups of vinegar, and a large raccoon. We probably don't have a large raccoon, do we? We probably have small, small yeah. raccoon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we've all got all, all cut up now. We're just gonna throw the pieces that we wanna keep in. Um, we figured we'd probably just try out the liver later, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead, throw that stuff in there. And then we're gonna, we have a little bit more than four cups of water in there right now. So we're gonna dump out our excess. And this is gonna work as a rinse too. We don't actually keep the brine, a little bit of the brine later on. And then we'll boil off a little bit of the water on our first boil. So this lets, we let this sit for eight hours. So it'll be ready for us for dinner. We're gonna go do some fishing. All right. Pour a little bit off. Yeah, pour a little bit of it off. This is just plain white vinegar. Oh, it stings! How many times did you cut yourself? <laughs> Zero. Oh, yeah. Okay, and we have pickling salt or pickling spices. I'll maybe include that, but that's just what I use for my leeks. To pickle my leeks. So I'll throw that in there. And then we're just gonna stir that around and let it sit. Eight hours we'll come back. We'll uh, we'll do a boil and add the rest of our ingredients to make a nice pot stew. So our raccoon's been sitting in the brine for most of today and now we're gonna, we're gonna save about a cup of the brine and we're gonna pull the pieces out. This is gonna be rinsed off and we're gonna boil in a cast iron. We're gonna do that for about an hour and a half until it's uh, nice and tender and then we're gonna add our other ingredients. So we have uh, green pepper, uh, green pepper, potatoes, uh, onion, and some carrots so that gets added after so for now we're just going to transfer this over just our pieces here and we're going to get them so that they're nice and tender it actually smells pretty good which is encouraging and it is becoming tender you can see how the meat's all starting to fall apart already so we're only going to add a cup of this as our reserve, a cup or so, it's probably a little much. And the rest is going to be filled with hot water and then we're going to boil that off and then we'll add our ingredients after. piece left. There it is. How's it look? I don't know. It looks like uh, big chunks of meat and lots of onion. What do you think? It's alright. Yep. That's like a dark meat. 
I think it could get a little more tender. We got another hour and a half according to our recipe. Breakfast. Dig, dig in. Yep. Yeah. So we let our we let our raccoon stew overnight. It's a real stew. Carrot. A carrot. What? Pepper. We're gonna dig right into the raccoon. Potatoes. I'm gonna eat everything but the raccoon. Yeah. There's a raccoon. Raccoon hunk. Oh. Here's a here's a back leg. I don't know if it's as tender as they promised. We'll see. Get a potato yet? And the potatoes are cooked. And the potatoes are cooked. So there's one ingredient we didn't find, and that's the cold's foot ash, which the recipe called for. Yeah, that one's on my list of things to try out for sure. So this comes from a Native American cookbook. And uh, that was the only thing we missed. So we'll see what, what the what the flavor is like with just the pickling salt. Wait, what first? Onion. It's already on my fork. Uh -huh. okay. That's what people really want to know about anyway. Sure they do. How do those onions taste after three hours or two pot? <laughs> like an onion. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the raccoon first. What? Yep. That's your raccoon, right there. Looks like a dark meat. What does it look like? Looks like beaver to me, or uh, hair, I guess. It looks a lot like rabbit to me, like a big rabbit. Oh, that's good. It's good. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually good. I wasn't expecting it to be bad. No? When I had raccoon before, it was on a, on a barbecue, and it was really greasy. It was like eating greasy chicken. That's good. Yeah. That's like a good roast beef. Or a tender hare. Yep. Yeah, that's good. It's a little light on flavoring. Yeah. We have a lot of liquid, eh? You got a, you got a hair on yours still. A hair on my hair? Oh no, it's a raccoon. <laughs> there it goes. Would you eat raccoon again? Oh yeah. For sure. So there you go. Catch and cook a raccoon. That's good, I'm just waiting for it to cool down a bit so I can eat it like a chicken wing. Like a caveman, when well, it's too hot to hold. Pretty tasty. It doesn't look like much. Like I think it'd be, it would look different if you cubed it all and did it in that style of stew. It's twice the size of a rabbit. It takes two rabbits to meet your caloric demands for a day. At least two rabbits, probably three. So one raccoon would probably do it. And you throw in all this other stuff and also look at how much food is in there. <laughs> There's. There's a few meals of stew there, right? 